there used to be some of the Arabs, some of the Arabs back then who worshipped some of the jinn. And these jinn themselves, as explained by Ibn Mas'ud, this is a tafsir of who? Ibn Mas'ud for this ayah, radiallahu anhu arda. Some, these jinn became Muslims. These jinn became Muslims. However, these Muslims, or these, these Arabs continued to, to do what? To worship the jinn. So, here's a jinn. They were kuffar. Arabs are worshipping the jinn. The jinn became Muslims, and the Arabs are still worshipping the jinn, who are now Muslims. So Allah said, those who they call on, which includes the jinn and Jesus and anyone else, they seek, they themselves, يبتغون, they seek means of nearness to Allah. And which one will be nearer to Him? And they hope for His mercy and they fear His punishment. They hope for His mercy and they fear His punishment. So the idea was that the same people you're worshipping, now the jinn, they themselves are trying to get to Allah. They themselves are trying to get nearer to Allah. يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَتَهُ They hope for Allah's mercy. وَيَخَافُونَ عَذَابَ They fear Allah. They fear Allah's punishment. يَبْتَغُونَ إِلَى رَبِّهِمُ الْوَسِيلَةِ They are seeking nearness to Allah. أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ Which one will be nearer? So the idea now, Jesus, is the same thing. People worship Jesus, and Jesus was trying to be obedient to Allah. And they continue to worship Jesus. When Allah is saying, those you're calling besides Allah, they themselves are trying to get nearer to Allah. And they're competing who will be nearer to him. They hope for Allah's mercy and fear Allah's punishment. So these are the two ayat where the, the term wasila came. In both tafsir, one of Ibn Abbas and one of Ibn Mas'ud. What does it mean? Getting nearer to Allah. It has nothing to do with the, the polytheistic wasila or the innovative wasila, as we will see later on. So this, the Quran then explicitly mentions what wasila is and the Sahaba explained to us the same understanding. So if anyone likes to oppose the Sahaba, then he needs to reconsider his understanding of Islam. طيب. So let me briefly elaborate on the lawful and prescribed tawassul. That can happen in three ways. That can happen in how many ways? Three ways. Number one, it is tawassul by means of Allah's names and attributes. Maybe many, many of you have this ayah memorized. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ Biha. And to Allah belongs the most excellent, beautiful, perfect names. So call on Him by them names. Call on Him by these names. Clear? How does that apply in our lives? When you want Allah's maghfirah, you say, Ya Ghaffar, or Ya Ghafur, Ighfir li. Ya Rahman, Irhamni, Ila akhirihi. Okay, you call on Allah, by a particular name or attribute of His, and you ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you according to that name and attribute. You know, usually is to make it any kind of uh, compatible. Ya Ghafur, Ighfirli. This is how, this is seeking nearness to Allah through His names. You're begging Allah through His names. Oh Allah, You are the Ahad. You are the Samad. You are the one who lam yalid wa lam yulad, for example. Al-Hayy, Al-Qayyum, Al-Aziz, il Oh Allah, forgive my sins, etc. Is that clear? That's the first kind of wasila through Allah's names and attributes. The Sunnah reinforces that. The Prophet Muhammad taught us that if you're feeling your, your, your chest is restricted and you're feeling sort of distressed and depressed, then he said, Allahumma inni abduka, ibn abdika, ibn amatika, nasiyati fi yadika il akhir hadith. Oh Allah, I am your slave, the son of your male slave, the son of your female slave. And then he continued to say, As'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa lak. I ask you by every name which belongs to you. Either you have revealed it in a scripture, or you taught it to one of your creatures, or you kept it in the knowledge of the unseen with you, that you make the Quran a spring of my heart until the end of the dua. So here we have the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he wanted to get nearer to Allah, when he wanted to do tawassul, how did he do it? By mentioning Allah's names. Oh Allah, I beg you that you are such a... Even in Salat al-Sikhara. فَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ وَلَا أَعْلَمْ فَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِرْ وَلَا أَقْدِرْ وَتَعْلَمْ وَلَا أَعْلَمْ وَأَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ If you read the sunnah, if you read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu it will become clear that predominantly his tawassul was through Allah's names and attributes. This is the sunnah.
This is the sunnah which everyone agrees to. The second means, the second kind is by the righteous deeds. The righteous deeds that one does. The righteous deeds that one does. Example, Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Those who say, O oh our Lord, our Master, we have believed. Amanna, فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا So then forgive our sins. Meaning, O oh Allah, because we believed, we are asking you now to forgive our sins. You see the means of through what? The righteous deeds. رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا Until the end of the ayah on Surah Al-Mu'minun. Verily, there used to be a group of my believers who used to say, Oh, our Lord, we believe, so forgive us our sins. And the hadith which everyone here knows, I'm assuming, you know the hadith of the three men who were trapped in a cave? Does everyone know the hadith? They went, of course, Bukhari and Muslim, they went into a cave and a, a stone or a boulder actually rolled down and it blocked them in the cave. Right. No, no, that's uh, not Surah Al-Kaf. That's, sur that's another story. This is the, the men of the Kaf. This is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu There were, he said, in the generations that came before you, there were three men. I'll just tell you the hadith. Summarize, summarize, because everyone probably knows it. There were three men from the nations that preceded us. Uh, they, there was some rain, they were out there, you know, whatever, walking, and there was some rain which forced them to go into a cave. After they went into a cave, an actual big stone rolled and blocked their entrance. So now they were blocked in the cave, they can't go out. What usually happens when you go in and you can't go out? You will die. No food, no drink, it's only a matter of time. So they looked at each other and said, look, nothing can save you from this except that you beg Allah through your, the best deeds which you did for his sake. So the first one said, Oh Allah, verily I used to have two parents, which I was very dutiful to, and he used to bring him milk every, every evening. One time he was delayed in bringing the milk. He came in and he found that his parents had fallen asleep. So he stood in front of the bed. His children are under him, begging him, you know, he wouldn't let her have his children drink the milk until he made his parents drink first. Now his parents are asleep. His children are under his you know, feet, begging him, you know, crying, we want to drink. And he had already made it a habit that he would never make his children drink before his parents. This is dutifulness now, which one of us does that? So then, and he did not want to disturb them. He did not want to wake them up. So he remained standing all night. All night standing in front of their bed. Until they woke up in the morning, then he gave him the milk. He said, Oh Allah, if I did this seek in your face and your pleasure, then make this stone move away. And indeed the stone moved away a little bit, but not enough for them to go out. The second man had a cousin which he loved and the story goes on. Then the stone was moved a little bit and the last one, you know, had an employee which he didn't pay his wages because the employee never came for the wages, but he saved it for him. And then after this, you know, then he came back after a long time, said, give me back my money. He said, everything you see here is yours. All these sheep and cattle, I use your money to actually do business. And this is a result of your money, your salary. It's all yours. So he said, oh Allah, if I did this for your sake, then make this boulder move. And indeed, the stone was moved away. And they were able to go out. How did they beg Allah? How did they do tawassul to Allah through what? Their good deeds. So you can say, you can say in your dua, many Muslims don't know this. Oh Allah, I ask you by the salah which I don't miss. And by my love to your Prophet Sallallahu pay attention. By my love, not by your Prophet Sallallahu as we will see. By my love to your Messenger of Allah, my obedience to him, my 